Good afternoon, elites. Um, today on the group coaching call, I wanted to talk a little bit about making changes in your business, right? Um, so if you're watching this from Facebook, welcome. Uh, thank you for taking the time to uh, listen to me talk about improving your gym um, and specifically about uh, how I like to go about uh, making any changes in my business, right? And I kind of use the same, the same format um, whenever I want to roll something new out to my team, right? Um, and it is covered in the course. It is covered in phase one. Um, ooh, lesson four. Lesson four. Um, and it is, uh, you know, rolling this phase out to your team. But I say in that video to uh, use this same model or template for any changes that you're making. Right. Um, and it in um, because I've done it the right way and I've done it the wrong way. Right. And um, in the beginning, I, I really uh, I really when making changes, any kind of changes, like whether you want to change your program, you want, whether you want to change your session length, whether you want to change your class times, whether you want to change uh, the layout of your gym, whether you want to change your your programming or your nutrition or whatever it is. Like it seems like anytime you want to make any changes and you have to roll it out to your team. Uh, people are resistant to it. And it's guys, it's not specific to your gym. It's not specific to our industry. Like people in general do not like change unless they created it, right? If they created the change, then it is not necessarily change. It is, um, uh, you know, it is it is vision, right? It's, it's them making improvements, you know, change that you create is progress, right? Change that someone else creates uh, is change and people don't like it, right? And so how do we make them feel like your guys are making progress? How do, you, how do we make them feel like you are executing the mission uh, based on everybody's vision? Well, we get them involved in it, okay? And so typically this is the way it works. Let's say I know that I want to make a change um, and, and, and I kind of reserve this to bigger changes. Like I don't, I don't call like all out meetings for like, if I want to replace the light bulbs with a higher wattage, like, um, which guys, I swear to you, this is, this is a funny story, but it's, it's a hundred percent true. Um, I did change the light bulbs in the lobby of my gym in 2015 from, um, soft white to, uh, daylight. And I had, uh, quite a few, not quite a few. I had two trainers, um, I don't want to exaggerate. I had two trainers come up to me and said they really didn't like the new light bulbs and that it was giving them headaches, right? Um, when literally it was the same wattage, it was just a different hue of light, right? And so that is what I mean about people's resistance to change, right? When something is different than they're used to. And it, guys, I think it's a natural, a natural, a natural thing that occurs in us as humans, right? Is that there's something about us not being informed or not being considered. And then all of a sudden, what you have been doing, someone is now asking you to do it differently, right? And, and I think that's the job as the leader to either be able to really articulate in certain situations why the change is necessary so they understand or to involve them in the process. And I lean towards involving them in the process. Um, but the, the key is that I already know what the outcome that I want is, and I just need to drive them in that direction so they think that they're the ones that created the change, right? And I think that that's a very important um, piece when it comes to managing and leading a team is to whether you do involve them or you give them the illusion of them being involved. And, some, and I, don't, I don't mean this at all by like being deceitful when it comes to uh, pretending that you're listening to them. I really don't mean it in that way. The thing is that, um, the thing is that in, in a lot of cases, they don't have the context to make the decision in the same way that you have the context. Do you know what I mean? Like, and so in some cases you can't involve them because they don't, they don't have the same information that you have, right? So like, let's say you want to change your pricing as an example, right? Um, and you're doing it because you intimately know your gross profit margins and you know all of your expenses, 
So therefore, you know your net profit margins and you know what you project to hit by the end of the year. And you know how much you want to take home as a business owner and how much you want to reinvest in the business. And you might have an idea of what you want to reinvest in and how that's going to generate you more revenue. And you know how much you have to allocate towards spending on ads uh, and, and whatever in order to generate the new clients that support that revenue. And all of these things, all of these factors uh, play, a, play a role in why you need to increase your, your prices directly to the customer, right? And so unless you are going to break down all of that to your team, which I don't recommend you do because they will not have the context. They don't stare at business numbers like you do. They don't understand cost of acquisition like you do. They don't understand margins. They don't, for the most part, if they're coaches, like their job is just to be really good coaches, right? If they want to learn all of that stuff, then they should become entrepreneurs too, right? But that doesn't mean that we don't involve them in the process of it, right? And so, so and, and that would be a reasoning why I, I like to have them involved, but ultimately I need to be able to get my result to be what I want it to be because I do have that information. And, and most likely for a gym, right? It's, it's a lot of the times owner operated, meaning that no one else is going to have that information besides you until you get a little bit bigger and you have like a team of leaders, right? Um, at my gym, we have a ops manager, a GM uh, and a sales manager. And so I would, I, would, I, would, I would let those people in on the real reasons why we need to do what we need to do because they do have the context, right? They are in my profit and loss sheets. They are, they, like they understand and they're incentivized via profit share to have the same result that I wanna have, right? They understand all of that stuff, right? Because I've trained them on it and it's part of their daily KPIs to know it, right? And that gives me freedom. If they don't know this stuff, then I won't have the freedom that I want to have, right? And so I need to, anything that I know, they need to know, right, in that business, you know, to an extent, right? Maybe there's some stuff that they don't know, like, um, I don't know, at this point, there's not even a lot of examples. But um, my point is that, okay, we've decided that we need to involve our team, so that way they think they were part of the change, which means that we are making progress as a business, right, versus them not being a part of it. And we're just changing things on them for no reason, even though there's always a reason. All right. So how do we do that? Well, the first thing I do is um, I set a meeting, right? I set a team meeting and, or you can repurpose one of your team. We, all, we already have monthly meetings, right? And so one thing I might do is repurpose that uh, monthly meeting. Um, and I will, I will, instead of going over like the standard things that we cover in our monthly meeting, which... Um, you guys, if you have a monthly meeting, should have like some kind of an agenda that you go over. Um, we typically start off with like client wins. And then we talk a little bit about our, our core values and, and different people on the team that uh, demonstrated those. That way it's always fresh in their minds. And then we'll talk about our goals that we set last uh, monthly meeting, um, how we did on those goals, right? And, and who did what and, and how well we performed and individual metrics and the scoreboard and all of that stuff. And then we'll talk about... Um, you know, this month's meeting, this month's goals and what we want to accomplish as a team and then individually and trainer tasks and all. So we, we follow this agenda, right? I might, if I needed to, to make a change, I might speed track that and use about 30 minutes of the 60 to uh, talk a lot about our mission, right? And I'd say, guys, I've been really thinking about our mission um, and, and why it is that we do what we do. Um, and I think there's an opportunity for us to serve our community at a higher level. Right. Or, or whatever your mission is. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming it's something about like wanting to serve your community, create an impact, um, you know, be be the, the best gym, health and fitness center, uh, something like that in your in your local area. Right. And so that's the catalyst for why we're making a change. It's always because we're we're trying to move closer to that. Right. Nobody's going to make change that would move farther away from that. Right. And so this is where you would involve them in that. Right. And you'll say, like, look, um, I really want to um, continually make progress towards achieving this mission. Right. I think it's important to have a mission statement um, written. So that way, everybody on the team understands what your mission is. If you don't have a mission statement written, um, I teach you how to do that um, in phase three, the final lesson not the final lesson, 
things have been moved around a little bit. I have to recalibrate where everything is, is categorized. Um, but it's the leadership lesson. Lesson. There's a button on there that gives you access to the leadership course. And in there, I teach you how to write a, a mission statement that is actually like usable, not just something you hang on the wall and then everyone just walks past it, right? Um, and and uh, how, to, how to involve your team in the progress towards accomplishing that mission. Part of it is like we... Part the last sentence of the mission statement is we will know we are successful when, and then you write down um, what you can use as an indicator of success. A lot of mission statements are missing that, and so their team doesn't even know when they've accomplished the mission, right? Um, and that's that's tough when you're a team that is like progressively just doing stuff without any end goal in sight, right? So, anyways, um, we're always making progress and change is just, or progress is just another name for change, right? That that the team or the person creates. And uh, we're always making progress towards accomplishing this mission. And because of that, I think that there's an opportunity for us to do, insert the change that you wanna make, right? So let's say, let's use the example of raising prices. I think there's an opportunity for us to serve more people, right? And so in order to serve more people and serve, serve people to a higher degree, here's what, I, here's what I was thinking. I think that we could increase um, our pricing to be more aligned with the service that we're offering, right? So I'd like to add in, you know, a, um, I'd like to add in a, uh, a, a new nutrition plan I'd like to, or I think that we've really been able to increase our, our coaching level or some justification to the team as to why you want to increase your prices. Um, and then what you're going to reallocate that increase with to help move you closer to the mission statement, right? So you could say like, look, with the increased amount of revenue that we'll bring in, from our new pricing structure, that will allow us to spend more on client acquisition, which means we're serving more people every single month of the year, right? And if our goal is to serve two, if, if our goal is to make 100 transformations this year, right, that means that we need to bring on 200 new members because let's be honest, um, if it, uh, not everybody makes it from, you know, what their goals are when they get here to like actually accomplishing those goals. We try our best with everybody, but let's say 50% of them make a transformation and that we can be proud of and hang it up on the wall, right? That's a hundred transformations. Well, if we can increase our cost to acquire customers um, and we can acquire more clients, then that's more transformations, guys. And what that means is a bigger impact on our community. And that's our mission, right? And so that's, that's what I've been thinking a lot about. And I just wanted to get your guys' opinions on it, right? And so um, I have two questions to ask you guys. Number one is, um, what do you think would be an appropriate increase, you know, based on, on, on the value that you think that you give to each and every one of our clients or that we give as a team to each and every one of our clients, right? And number two is what are some things that you think we could add to our program to further demonstrate that value? Now, guys, I'm just spitballing this. I've just, you know, uh, I just, this is kind of how I would handle a price increase change. There's going to be a lot of different changes, like adding new programs and all that kind of stuff, right? But now I can get their feedback. And they'll say like, oh, I think we can increase it by $10 a week. I think we should increase it by $50 a month. I think we should only increase it by $3 a week because of whatever. Um, I think X, Y, and Z. Okay, cool. And what are some things that you think we could add? And they'll give you like, we should do new nutrition plans, or we could write a cookbook, or we can give them a t-shirt or whatever it may be. Be like, you know what, guys, I wrote all this stuff down. Actually write it down, right? So they know that you're paying attention. And then be like, hey, um, on our next team meeting, uh, I'm gonna talk, I'm gonna, we're gonna go over all of this stuff and I'm gonna let you know what, you know, what I think uh, or what we came up with. I like saying it like that, what we came up with, even though you're the one coming up with it. If you don't want to wait a whole month, you could easily say like, hey guys, um, I'd really like, this was a great conversation. Like, I'd really like to follow up on this, you know, next week, if we all can meet back here or, or whatever, um, because I don't want to wait a whole month. This is exciting. I don't want to wait a whole month to roll it out, right? And then, so you could say like, 
all right, you have a, your second team meeting, right? And this is like, hey guys, I took everything that you said, right? I wrote it all down and here's what I came up with, right? Or here's what we came up with. This was the average of what everybody said, right? And so um, hopefully this is very close to what you wanted to do in the first place right, the increase that you wanted to make. So like if you wanted to go from $69 a week to $79 a week and you had all these prices thrown out, be like, hey, 79 was the average, right? Whether it was or not, like nobody else in your team is crunching that math, right? They're not, they're not gonna be like, wait, I wrote down that Brian said 20 and Susie said seven. So the average is technically 925. Like nobody's doing that guys. Be like, this is the average of it. So it's, it's gonna be $79 a week. And I wrote down everything that you guys, um, suggested and these are the ones that we picked because they're going to cost the least amount of service right which gives us the profit margins some of the things that you guys uh suggested absolutely amazing but after you know kind of figuring out how much it would cost us to do that it's kind of just a wash with the price increase so it's not really going to give us that extra money to put towards marketing so i don't want to add those quite yet i wanted to add the ones that do give us that extra money because that'll help us get closest to our mission always bring it back to the mission that'll help us get closest to our mission, right? And so um, so now you've had, uh, you've rolled out the, the changes to the group. The final meeting would be um, the next time you have one-on-ones. And if you don't have one-on-ones with your team, I'd recommend at least just once a, week, once a month, have a one-on-one -on -one with each person on your team. We kind of use these to do like a career roadmap type thing. Um, and, and really like talk to them about where they're at, where they'd like to be, and then how they can get there. Right. Um, or reset expectations that like um, the goals that they have uh, would be difficult with the position that they hold. Right. I've had that conversation sometimes where it's like, yeah, I want to make 200K a year. And it's like, OK, well, you do realize that you're a part time trainer. here, Right. And so in order for you to to, to make that amount, you would have to train uh, 70 sessions a week and sell $20,000 a month, every month in sales. So like there is a path for you to get there, but you currently are not your part-time, right? And so you'd have to be like full-time with overtime type of deal, right? Um, and so um, it's it's sometimes a good for us to kind of set those expectations for each one of them. Or if they do have, if you guys do identify like really like where they'd like to be at, um, you can take a look at where they're currently at and say like, look, it looks like we need to get you about five more clients and, and you, you can play a big role in that. And it looks like we need to get your sales from an average of like 5K a month up to like 7K. That way you're hitting your profit bonuses too and do you're right where you wanna be. So how can I help you do that, right? That's kind of what we do in our one-on-one -on -one meetings um, and these like roadmaps and kind of look at the, what they're doing versus what they want to be doing and how we can bridge that gap. But this is where I would talk about that change too, right? And that way, if they are, if there was anything they didn't like about it, you have the opportunity to, to, to let them voice that, but not in the group, right? You don't want uh, a mutiny on your hand. Um, and that typically only happens in a group environment where the majority of the group disagrees with what you're saying and somebody feels uh, like they want to speak up about it. That's when you could, you could end up in, and guys, I've been in a lot of these meetings, it's not comfortable. Right. Um, and, but that's, that's usually how it happens. And so um, in order to, to combat that, um, I like to have these one-on-one -on -one meetings um, and you can do it again. You could, if you don't want to wait, you can be like, Hey guys, this was a great meeting. I'm super excited to, um, to talk about rolling this out and, and a little bit more about what this could mean for our business. I would like to set one on, uh, set up one-on-ones with you guys only 30 minutes next week. That way um, we can talk a little bit more about where you guys are at and, and any specific ideas that you have. It looks like we're just running out of time now, um, but I'm not gonna ask you guys to all come back here at the same day and save time. We'll just grab a time that you're already in here and we'll sit down and, and, and talk for 30 minutes and see if you have any more ideas, right? And so then I'd set those one-on-one -on -one meetings and that's where I would let them voice any questions or concerns that they had about whatever the changes are. So I can kind of rationalize it with them. And by the time we're done with that meeting, they, they're they leaving feeling really comfortable about it. Okay, Joey explained it all to me. Like it, it makes a lot of sense now. Um, and their questions and their concerns 
are not being transferred over to somebody else that maybe didn't even have those questions or concerns, but because it was brought up, they're like, oh yeah, that's a good idea. What about that? And it's like, bro, you weren't even like, you didn't even have that. Like you didn't even have that negative, you know, mindset about this until John just said it, you know, so don't give John the opportunity to spread that negativity to the rest of the group, right? He may, not everybody's going to love your changes, right? Um, some of them may not be better for the employees, but better for the business. And sometimes you have to do that as a, as a business owner or you close the doors and then nobody has jobs, right? And so it's better to handle those conversations one-on-one -on -one and not in a group because it's hard to win the group. Right. But the goal is to have everybody feeling good at the end of that one on one with the change or at least understanding it. Right. Employees can typically deal with a a negative outcome if they understand why it's being done versus a negative outcome. And they, they honestly, they just don't even know why you're doing it. That's when they start resenting you and thinking that you're dumb. Right. It's because you're 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 doing something that they view as a bad decision for them, a bad decision for the business, and you're not explaining to them why you're even doing it, right? That's that's when you lose good employees, right? And so the objective is uh, to help them understand, you know, and then actually listen to them. So just actually listen. Don't just over, just don't, don't just talk over them the whole time. Like listen to what they have to say. And if you follow that process, guys, those three meetings, um, I go into a fourth meeting when it comes to rolling out your transformation program. And that is only because we're talking about the scorecard and the four hours and that kind of stuff. But those three meetings will help you overcome any kind of change in your business. If you hold them, I mean, guys, I've had people that had these meetings like three days in a row, right? And so they, they, they were able to accomplish, um, accomplish the change that they wanted to in 72 hours. And the team was excited about it, right? And so um, this is what I've learned. Uh, you know, and one of the biggest differences, I think, in being a boss and being a leader, right? Of course, you can just make the change yourself, right? You own the company, you write the checks, it's your money, right? Of course, you don't have to consider them. Like, everybody knows that. Everybody knows that you can just, like, what you say goes, right? But the outcome is not going to be the same if that's how you decide to run your company, right? It's going to be harder for you to keep good employees. It's going to be harder for you to earn your freedom because they are not going to, they're not going to self-manage themselves when you're not there, right? Because they don't, they don't believe in you, right? They, they, you rule by force instead of ruling, uh, you know, as a, as a wise leader, right? And so, and I think people know the difference between that. And so I think that um, depending on the outcome and the business that you want to have, this would be a really good way or a really good process to implement uh, when it comes to making changes at your business and um, try it, try it. And I, and I, and I can bet you that um, you will have a really positive outcome. So uh, with that being said, I'm gonna let you guys go. Um, the new coaching call format is going to be a little bit more webinar like it is now. And if you have any questions, you can drop it in the Facebook chat only because, um, and, and you, by all means, you can still join the, the zoom room, but, um, there's a lot of like, uh, muting and microphones and all that kind of stuff. And I think it's a little bit easier just to uh, have a clean, clear, uh, coaching call, um, where you guys can get the information, watch it on your own time, watch the replay. So anyways, guys, I appreciate you taking the time to join me today. Um, tomorrow I'll be back on here talking about more subject matter and hopefully you guys uh, are kicking some ass and, and have a good week going on. So see you guys tomorrow. We're out of here.